you know, like we, we say we're private, you know, Catholics are private. Um, you said it's not selfishness, it is, yeah, it is next, more of fear. You could be living next door to your neighbors and, you know, you don't know anything about them. I suppose that's all around the world, but fear, I think, you know, it's a fear of, of, um, of being found out. Or yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. People know your business, a fear of uh, being sent all your religious, all your Indians, a, a, fear, a fear basically. Put it on your lap. You know, um, that people will judge you or condemn you. Or okay. You, you. Now, what, what is fear? It's a demonic spirit. How does a person get into fear? In the Bible, it's recorded for the first time the word fear. When was it? When Adam made a decision to go thinking and acting in contradicting to God's word. So what is selfishness? Selfishness is when a person thinks anything contradicting to God's word is selfishness. The result is fear. Shyness is also contradicting to God's word. So it is also self-centeredness, it is fear, it is pride. And the Bible says God fights against pride and exalts the humble. So who is a person who is humble? Any person whose thinking aligns with God's word is humble. Now God will fight for him and exalt him. But if his thinking is wrong, now God will fight against those negative thoughts, which is called as pride. He opposes the proud. He opposes the pride, the proud, and exalts the humble. So what's the devil's job? If I want to destroy you, and I'm the devil. All I have to do is, Brother Amal, who is working in your office, use him to trouble you. So all the time you are hurt. So when you are hurt, the whole time you are thinking what he did to you. So you are already hurt. But when, he, when the same person begins to think, even though Amal is hurting me, but I'm only going to look at what Jesus did on the cross for me. So am I focused on Amal or am I focused on Jesus? Can we talk? Yeah. So whenever a person is hurt, he has allowed himself to think about him. So can I ever hurt anybody who is not thinking about him? Could Satan use people to hurt Jesus? Yes. No, because if he was hurt, he wouldn't have said, Father, forgive them. When you're hurt, you don't forgive. When you're hurt, you are bitter against that person. Yes. So was Jesus focusing on what people did to him or was he focused on carrying his father's order? The reason I am hurt is because I am thinking about me. If I am thinking about the Father and His will, I can never be hurt. So hurt does not depend on what people did to me. Hurt depends on how did I respond to what people did to me. Because Jesus responded with love and forgiveness and that is why the Bible says God exalted him and gave him a position at the right side in heaven. Yes. So if I am hurt, is it my pride? Yes. If I refuse to get hurt and I forgive, am I humble? Yes. And if I am humble, my decision to forgive, will God get into the battle for me? Yes, but if I am hurt, now will God get into the battle for me? No, no. he can only get into the battle for me when I choose to
forgive now that i choose to forgive is god going to fight the battle for me surely so is it going to depend on what people do to me or is it going to depend on my response to those people why is a person depressed a person is depressed because he is thinking all the time about me is that the apologize is that saying is denying yourself yeah deny yourself yes yeah yes hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus praise the lord praise the lord can, can we praise god for a moment please thank you jesus praise you jesus hallelujah 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 thank you jesus come on keep praising god keep praising god keep praising god hallelujah thank you jesus hallelujah thank you jesus hallelujah thank you jesus hallelujah come on let's praise god hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus so so our tri- our trials going to be there in our life our opposition going to be there in our life yes. our troubles there go- are going to be in our life yes. have you been praying saying to god god when will these troubles get over lord please help me he is saying it's so simple the day you stop breathing oxygen troubles are over what does that mean till my last breath there will be what peace there will be peace troubles but are troubles supposed to rule over my life now the way i respond will decide whether the troubles will trouble me or i will trouble my trouble can you ask your neighbor do you trouble your trouble or trouble troubles you can we talk does trouble trouble you or you trouble trouble you know you know what i found in ireland is something beautiful can i share with you the other day we were going to dublin and on the way i saw your plants had become white in the morning the grass had become white in the morning what do you call that grass now how many times do you find the the, the grass grumbling and 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 and, and, and angry with god is it facing all the temperature yes what about the trees yes. are they saying to the owner it's enough is enough yes. if you don't put me in the shed next year i'm not going to bear any fruit <laughs> what i was talking to vijay is i do not find any of the trees moving from its place it is grounded it's facing all the troubles but every year it's getting stronger and stronger and growing bigger and bigger is that right yes. come on and when the season comes for the fruit is it saying this time i had terrible trouble so i'm not going to bear fruit no. so is the tree rooted in the same place yes. what about us are we rooted in the same place yes. or when the pressure comes we are going in all direction yes. and that's why the bible says we got to be rooted and grounded in the word and in his love So let us look at Jesus how in a hopeless condition when his own friends rejected him one betrayed him one denied him and everyone ran for their life and how did he face that trouble on that night praise God did he open his mouth and curse them did he look at them with compassion come on yes. now when Jesus was going through the death was he filled with sorrow no. was he filled with sorrow yes yes what kind of a mother you are <laughs> sorry the joy at the end so he was not filled with sorrow no, how come you are so different from others wasn't he full of sorrow when he faced all that insult abuse and crucifixion and death come on yes. let's talk come on let's talk 
Yes, my brother is gone. Let him come. Just put Hebrews 12 too quickly, brother. Because let's see why was Jesus not filled with sorrow and why was he filled with joy? So once you understand that, then you will begin to understand that in every hopelessness and in your trials, God definitely has plans and purpose in our life. And our, and, and our job is to seek God's plan and purpose. And once you have found that this is what is God's purpose, this is what God's plan in my life, even in the worst of the worst condition, you are filled with you are filled with joy. Come on, let's go and see. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2. Come on, read it. Looking to Jesus. Looking to Jesus. Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. So, when we are going through the trial, do we look to Jesus or do we look to our situation? What's the meaning of looking to Jesus? Looking to Jesus means looking at his picture day and night. Yeah? Looking to his word because Jesus and his word are the same. Let's take for example, we were all busy uh, looking at the scriptures and we are studying the word of God and all of a sudden there is a ringtone of somebody's mobile. Will your head turn towards the person from where the mobile came, the sound is coming. Yes or no? Yes. Will it irritate you? Yes. Now, did you got distracted by just one ringtone? Yes. So now, are you looking to Jesus or the mobile ringtone? Yes. So in our life, are there many distractions yes. that is distracting you from looking to Jesus? Yes. That's why he says, looking unto Jesus he is the one who gave you the faith. He is the one who will finish the faith. Means he is the one who gives you the promise. He is the one who will keep that promise going till it is manifested. Praise God. Is that a good news? And then he says, who for the sake of the who for the sake of my God. So was it God asking his son to go through the cross and there was some joy in that. Can a person have joy when he's being crucified? Yes, who said that? Let me bring some knife and poke you and see. Not cut you, only poke you. I won't cut you, just give a poke. And it will cause some pain. Will you have joy? Afterwards? So joy comes after you get the poke. Can you get a knife? The fork also will do. So I want to know what is joy. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is my strength. In other words, when a person is filled with joy, he has such strength that even the best painkillers cannot give you relief. The joy can make your whole journey as if it is painless. So what is this joy? Yeah, brother, you are the only one talking to me. Chris, uh, uh, both of you are talking to me. I think one I should put them this side, then everybody will start talking. Yeah, Chris. Uh, the joy is because he knows the end result. He knows the end result. Praise God. And what about you, brother? Yeah, um, that's, that's what I was going to say. Uh, uh, you are going with Chris. Okay. Now let's see why was Jesus filled with is sharing the testimony after the day on the day of Pentecost um, when the Holy Ghost came and the people had crucified and Jesus had ridden, risen and after 10 days praise God on the 50th day 40 days Jesus was with the disciples and on the 10th day when he ascended to heaven on the 10th day the Holy Ghost came upon the disciples and they received the gift of tongues and here is Peter giving his first sermon in Acts chapter 2 and verse number 26 and 27 
therefore my heart therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced moreover my flesh will live in hope for you will not abandon my soul to hate or let your holy one escape corruption now this is what god is saying uh, the word of god is saying about jesus even before he died on the cross he was rejoicing because he knew one thing that the father would not allow his soul to be destroyed in hates neither would he experience corruption that means jesus had the knowledge of resurrection even before his death hello uh, is there any mother here okay how many children you got three you are the only one who has who has got delivered babies through your womb all the others got children ready made <laughs> wow can i ask her some questions she has got five did all of them came from your womb did you know the pregnancy was for 9 years oh sorry Nine months or nine years? Nine What if it was nine years? You are already closing your eyes. Was those nine months good? Some of them, yes. Or supposing you had morning sickness, vomiting, and all that, is it a good experience? It is a good experience. Can I pray? Can I lay hands on her that every day she gets vomiting without pregnancy? would that be good <laughs> vomiting everything no let's be honest when a person is vomiting is it a good good experience yes. no. not at all not at all and you love sweets let's say you love sweets but during pregnancy you could not eat even one the, the very look ah! now was that a bad experience it was yes what about the what about the it's over. It's okay. Okay. no 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 i'm talking about the process Oh, what about the labor pain? Oh yes. It was very good experience. Yeah. <laughs> And how long it lasted? Uh, Ten long. minutes, five minutes, two minutes, long. one minute, uh, few seconds. Hours. Hours. Some of them even days. Okay, yeah. yeah. At that time, did you feel? Oh my God! Once it is over, it's good. Yeah. At that time, did you feel like? God, finish it. I don't want any more. sometimes yeah. then why did you have four more because <laughs> i love <the> babies <laughs> because you love babies you love babies in the same way jesus loves you and me and that's why he is giving birth to all of us by him hanging on the cross and that's why he's saying just put the previous one brother hebrews that's why he's saying who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross so was jesus looking at the cross was he looking at his resurrection was he looking at his victory was he looking at you and me was he looking at the salvation of the whole world so is joy depending on my situation or the way i think and when i'm thinking in god's way is god going to give me his strength to get victory yes, yes. so once i understand this that jesus had known before the manifestation that this is what he is going through and he kept looking at that did he have joy yes do you know what's happening in your life how will i know what's happening in my life i will know what is happening in my life through the scriptures so once i know that god's plan in my life what is god's plan for your life come on somebody to prosper you, to prosper you. what else to give you health wealth very good happiness, happiness. Wife, very good. wife very good plenty of children yeah very good house car 
and all the answers are wrong <laughs> god is not interested in any of those things let's see what god is interested in so once you understand this is god's purpose and this is my purpose now if they, the both purposes are conflicting will there be joy <coughs> no but if we, if i understand this is god's purpose and then i'm running into that purpose all these things what my brother said comes to me just as a person going to the mall buying one taking one free as you seek the kingdom of god first and then all those things that you need will be fruit you will receive you will see but are we seeking god's kingdom first or are we seeking the wife first the wife are we seeking the job first or the kingdom So is our focus right, or focus gone off focus? Praise God. Now let's see what God has to do. Romans eight twenty eight and twenty nine. We know that. We know that. We know that. All things, some things. all things work together for good for those who love god who are called has anybody ever baked his own cake cake do you put all ingredients separate or you mix them together and then you put mix together what if you have made those ingredients and never put it in the oven and you serve it to everybody and say this is my cake all the restroom will be full ha huh? all the restroom will be full restroom will be full <laughs> will anybody like to taste that cake no but if it is baked yes so he said all things together work for good so a good experience bad experience trials and all these things put together and going into an oven experience does the cake jump out of the oven when it is being cooked and says i can't stay inside does it go through the whole process are we willing to go through the whole process is it extremely hot for the cake to be inside the oven but if it says i don't want to go through that i'm i'm happy in a room temperature how will it be the cake so god says all things work together work together let's take fast quickly moses was he 40 years in the palace he was born in a hebrew family was there a law to kill the male child did the mother kill the child no did she put the child in a basket did pharaoh's daughter pick her up was was moses raised up in egypt in the palace wasn't he a prince didn't he think my life is going to be so good and all of a sudden one day did he make a mistake yes did he kill that egyptian yes did he ever think he will have to run for his life that morning now the moment he killed and people came to know what came to him fear what fear pharaoh is going to kill him what did he do he ran for his life which way into the desert was moses trained to survive in the desert no he was a mighty warrior he was well educated in everything concerning egypt administration palace rules all that excellent but the desert never been to the desert now did he had to learn how to survive in the desert yes. did he pass on to the other side yes. did god take care of him yes. did god bring him under jethro jethro was the priest praise god and he had his cattle and all that and moses got connected to jethro and jethro gave him a job what was the job to look after his sheep what about moses is he a prince yes and and in in his outfit uh, jethro gives him a job and what's the job look after my sheep does moses take the job yes why does he take a job there's no other option 
Now, how would it look for a prince to work as a man who is looking after the sheep? Is it easy? Now, how long did he look after the sheep? 40 years. How many times do you think Moses would be thinking about the palace experience? And was he depressed? Hello, was he depressed? Or was he carrying out his life? He was carrying out his life, looking after the sheep. When the 40 years were over and God said, now you are ready, now I can take you. Did God show himself in a burning bush? Now was Moses an expert in the palace? Yes. Was he expert in the desert? Yes. Now all his hardship, did God use him to bring the Israelites out of the Egypt into the desert to the promised land? So if you are going through some trouble, that trouble is not meant for you, but that trouble is meant to train you so that when you come out of that trouble, you are going to train others how to come out of their bondages and you are the one who is chosen by God to take others to the promised land. Congratulations. Are you listening? Yes. So are, are you, any of your hardship going to be going into waste? Never. Are you listening to something? No. So from where is the sound coming? Oh, I thought it was soundproof. Have you ever heard soundproof? Hello, have you ever heard soundproof? What does that mean? Sound cannot come in. Have you ever heard bulletproof? What's the meaning? The bullet can't come in. Have you ever heard weatherproof? What does that mean? The temperature can't come in. Have you ever heard in your life failure proof? Because everything in this life fails. But Bible says love never fails. So if you don't want failures in your life, practice love. It never fails. Praise God. Shall we continue? Did God then take Moses back to the palace? But this time, did he take Moses on his strength or God's strength? Was Moses scared of Pharaoh? Yes. But this time, is he scared of Pharaoh? No. He has been trained under God to submit to him, obey him, and walk with him. Was now Moses walking in the supernatural? In the same way, when do you get good training? When you're going through the trial and you submit to God, that's the time God trains you, squeezes you and makes you a person that you have never been before. And that's where we learn to depend on God. That's where we learn to, to, to discover God's plan and purpose in our life. Hallelujah. And that's what he says. God works all things together for good for those who love God who is called according to his purpose. Now when I went through depression, I never thought that that depression would turn my life around. As long as everything was going on fine and people came and spoke about God, I showed them the door. And when crisis struck and I was on the point of death and there was no way out, somebody came and preached the gospel and this time I took the option to go with the gospel. Praise God. Now the gospel changed my life. It saved my life. It brought me back into a new life. Praise God. And little did I know in those days of crisis that God had a future. And he, one day at a time he began to teach me the gospel and I began to follow and I began to follow and I began to follow. 23 years later on when I see if anybody has to say when was the best time in your life? I'll say in the time of crisis when I encounter Jesus. The crisis was meant by the devil to kill me but God used that crisis to change my direction. And that's where I discovered God's purpose in my life. I discovered God's plan in my life when I began to follow him. I did not choose to be a preacher. I did not choose to go from place to place. But when I found in the midst of my trial, the word giving me encouragement, the word giving me strength, the word giving me hope in the hopeless situation, I grabbed it and when I saw somebody with hopelessness, I went and told them my story. Oh, you went and told the others, brother. 
Yeah, my God, I would go and I would catch anybody on the street and I would not leave them. And when I would tell them the story, I would add some scriptures and I began to learn more scriptures. So the first three months was only telling about stories. You know what, I, what happened to me? I said, Lord, if Matthew can write his story, Luke can write his story, Mark can write his story, my voice is loud, no, what not, to do? No, no, not voice. My speed is okay. Okay, I'm going too fast. Are you, are you understand? Yeah. yeah, yeah. By now they have picked up my English. <laughs> Hallelujah! Sorry. Just as I picked Sorry. up their English. <laughs> Hallelujah! We are family now. <laughs> Hallelujah! So, so Matthew wrote about his experience. Luke wrote about his experience. John wrote about his experience. Now, even I have experienced Jesus. So let me go and share my gospel. What, what, what gospel according to Johnson? What God has done in my life. Praise God. And when I share my gospel of what Jesus has done in my life, praise God, my life also changed. Thank you for coming in front. Thanks for coming in front. I don't have to scream now. Praise God. Hallelujah. So does God work all things together? Did my bad things also help me today to give testimonies? If I find somebody in depression, I tell them, are you, are you in depression? Oh yeah. Okay, tell me what's your name? And the person says his name. And I say, hey, when I was in depression and somebody asked my name, I did not know my name. So whose condition is better? Hello, whose condition is better? The person in depression or mine? Okay, do you take bath? Yeah. Do you shut the door or you keep the door open? I shut the door. Oh, I could not even keep the door closed. My wife had to stand at the door. Whose condition is better? I could not stay in a room by myself. Whose condition is better? I did not know my name. I did not know anything about me. I could not recognize my wife, my children. <coughs> Whose condition is better, ma'am? Yes, and if your condition is better and mine was worse and I took this word and this word got me out, I tell you this medicine has got no bad effect. The only difference is when you take doctor's medicine, you take how many pills? Two, three, four, five. One in the morning, one in the afternoon, one in the evening, one at night. Come on. When I found this pill, I took it for 15 hours, 12 hours, 11 hours, overdose of this, and I found no bad effect, only bad effect got destroyed. Has anybody ever had breakfast and lunch today? Did you eat? What did your stomach do? Took that food and converted it into calories. Is that right? And now what is your body doing? Using the fuel called calories. From where? From the natural food. What happens when the calories go down? It's saying, give me more fuel. So is that right? what Jesus meant? You know, uh, Jesus said, you know, man shall not live by bread alone, but by the word of God. Yeah, so, 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 so my calories are gone down. So now I need once more food. Does my stomach work on the food? Yes. Do you know how? I don't know. But God has designed the stomach. It converts the natural food into calories. In the same way, I have to eat spiritual food. How do I eat the spiritual food? Can I take a word and eat it? No. I eat the spiritual food with my ears. So when I hear and hear and hear and hear and hear and hear and hear the words, my heart converts those words into either faith or fear. If it is the doctor's word and it's a bad, bad report, it will convert it into fear. And if it is a good word from the doctor's report that everything is in your favor, it will create good. But if you take the word of God, the word of God will always be converted into a power which is supernatural called faith. So when a person is sick, and the same person now eats the word of God with his ears and overeats it day and night. Now your heart or your spirit will convert it into faith and that faith will move your mountain. 
Jesus never said God moves your mountain if you are going to God and saying God please move this mountain it's threatening me it's hurting me he said that's not my job that's your job and to move that mountain you got to eat good spiritual food every day so that's why Jesus he kept speaking with faith he kept speaking with faith he said your faith has healed you he never said your prayer has healed you he never said prayer so the emphasis really in the churches you know how I was how I was brought up and my mother being a nun was you know how you should pray how you should fast how you should do this or whatever but it's faith is the, the, the main thing main thing the faith is what you are hearing right now yes. are scriptures connected to the word of god yes. it gives you faith now what will these words do what you are hearing yes. converted into a calorie called faith which is supernatural and this faith has power to kill cancer or any kind of incurable disease but please overdose it and how do you overdose it you can go on the youtube click on jcilm.info there are more than 4000 videos take those videos plug it into your ears and get blessed i started watching my wife recently on jcilm and uh, just she said she's saying the atmosphere in the house has changed and there's joy but when i was just going to mass and trying to be a good person just negativity fear what they're teaching in the church is just kind of like we see that they're so sad and fearful a lot of people going to mass and oh you know um, it, 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 can i can i say that about mass i don't know what uh, okay okay i want to tell about mass yeah. when i was in depression the priest who was celebrating the mass he celebrated the mass for more than one and a half hour and in that mass he would explain what is actually happening in the spiritual realm he taught the word of god for more than 1 hour 30 minutes might be and then whatever was the reading he explained to the people and he said now when we are going to eat the body and blood of jesus the word that you heard is jesus himself and is going to bring healing then when he would take the lamb of god who takes away the sins of the world he would say watch the lamb of god who is not only taking the sins he is taking your sickness he is taking your disease he is taking everything and now when i'm going to distribute this jesus and he's going to come into your heart he will kill every sickness in your body and when the eucharist was over he would tell them now close your eyes and reflect on all that you heard and then he would start prophesying and people would get healing left right everywhere it is about how much i believe in the presence in, in the presence of jesus in the eucharist i was in praise god i was in mass for 20 years and that's exactly what happened i mean i got it i got it confession and do not uh just when i went to mass after being absent for over two decades and i felt for you that peace joy and love So in fact I, in believe, if, I, just, i was told by one of my by my friends that I was the Eucharist was um, basically uh cannabis and what you know it's body it's just wine and wafers it's just bread so i just think that um obviously it's linked um but it's 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 kind of a learning thing you can praise god you learn more you realize you don't know what is praise god <laughs> hallelujah because the bible says the one who eats the body and the drinks the blood of jesus jesus dwells in me and i dwell in jesus so if jesus dwells in me and jesus went around healing the sick casting out demons and all that now how many of us after receiving jesus are saying to themselves i thank you lord you are inside of me and you are the same jesus yesterday today and forever and you healed everyone and right now i'm so excited lord that i am been healed of physical sickness mental sickness fear anxiety addiction and all this oh jesus i thank you i love you i praise you hallelujah 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 and as that person is thinking that person won't even know that sickness is gone so gratitude is the key so praise god yeah. hallelujah so let's come back 
So, is there a purpose? For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be? To be? So, what is God's plan for your life? To make you like Jesus. And when you become like Jesus through his word, now when you open your mouth and speak to sickness, they are destroyed. And that's what happened with the apostles. That's what happened with the early church. And that is what we, all of us, got to do. So what should be our focus? How much can I get blessed? What, how much wealth can I get? How much healing can I get? How much this I get? How much that I get? Or oh, my focus should be, how much can I become like? Like? So is, G, is God interested in making us like Jesus? Are we interested in becoming like Jesus? Or are we interested in, 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 in getting prosperous? Brother Amal, can you please come here? Please watch this. Do you know this brother? Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to punch him in his stomach hard. <laughs> now what did he do? Hello, what did he do? He put his hand in between. Now what if the same Amal was black belt in martial arts and I would say I'm going to punch you he would be standing like this because he'll say your best punch is no is not going to affect me because I take bigger punches than that this happened in Australia all of a sudden for no reason the Lord told me call that brother he's a martial art black belt double degree belt champion so I called him and I did not even say anything. I punched him hard in his stomach to see what is the effect. He did not even shake. And then I went 25 punches one after another. And he's still standing this way. And then I called another brother and I said, now watch this, this brother, how he takes the punches. And I just did like, I did it to Amal and he quickly <laughs> responded. Why is this brother standing this way? Because he has trained his body to take those hits then I told the wife you must be feeling very sad that I punched your husband 25 times she said no I'm not sad because he pays money to get beaten up I said what do you mean before he goes for the tray for the fights a month before he gives money to his coach and all that he has to do is take punches on his body and those punches are extremely hard and he has to season his body for the fight. So he pays money to take beating. So she said, when I saw you, I, I started laughing and I said, this will not even affect him. So as he trained himself. So in the same way, God wants us to be trained to be conformed to what? Now was Jesus going for a fight or was he all the time full of love? So what's your battle every day? To fight or love? What kind of love? Huh? Unconditional love? A one-sided love? Love each other. That means thinking about my benefit or thinking about others' benefit. Thinking about my comfort or thinking about others' comfort. And that's why you Irish people are always thinking about others' comfort. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So Jesus was selfless. He was selfless Praise God. So, so, so are we all the time in selfless love or self-love? Anybody married? So in your marriage, what are you thinking all the time? To comfort my spouse? Or how much will my spouse comfort me? Can we talk? When, when, when you did not get satisfied, are you hurt? If, if at all, the husbands never go do this, but if at all, the husband forgot to wish you for your birthday. Very rare. He can never forget. But let's say he forgot to wish you on your birthday. Will you be happy? Can that one act 
cause you sadness how long how long will that sadness be 10 minutes 5 minutes 10 seconds if you go gorgeous maybe longer now is your life governed by his performance so is it love but look at jesus he is giving the definition of love is no matter how you treat me i will still be good to you i will still comfort you i will still not leave you i will still not forsake you i will still give my life for you i will still be a substitute for you i will still take your punishment and set you free what do you call that love and what is god interested in making us the same that that he, he might be the first born within a large family so are there two families on this planet earth yes one coming from adam and eve and one coming from jesus when you and i are born from a mother's womb we come from adam and eve but the day we got born again we are no longer under the curse of adam and eve we are under the blessings of jesus we belong to the family of jesus jesus is the first born Jesus is the first born or Jesus is the new creation born again and is the first one and we all have come from him and that's why we are also born of God born of the spirit and having the nature of Christ in us amen, amen. hallelujah so so when Jesus was in the grave when Jesus was on the cross did he already knew that God would raise him up Now in the same way has Jesus told us that when you die you only die in your body your spirit and soul is forever and if you have made a choice and prepared yourself for all eternity now are you scared of death or excited that the next moment i am on my journey to heaven hello thank you jesus Now what's the second thing that God wants to see in our life? One he wants to understand that his his main interest in our life is to make us from a corrupted person to a person or like of Jesus. So just as Jesus went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil because God anointed him with holy spirit and power God was with him he wants us to become the same the second thing that God wants us to know is that we are the church are you the church yes. or is the building the church we are hello we are does god in those days during the time of jesus and after jesus died and the apostles and the early church did God operate in people's life through a massive building or through these apostles massive building or through the uh, disciples and their early christians so even today god wants us to understand that he brings blessings deliverance and every goodness of his he always brings through the church and you are the church now if somebody has to ask me brother how many people do you think you must have touched in your life in the last 23 years i can say more than a million now has he given all of us the same kind of grace yes but are we using the same kind of grace or are we all the time interested in my comfort what about the early early apostles were they interested in their lives in their whatever god had blessed them or were they interested in going to the gentiles going from place to place and touching people's life let me give you a story from your country irish people 
who got touched some centuries back, they came on a ship to India. How many days they must have traveled? God only knows. How many uh, storms they must have faced on the ship? God only knows. Did they even think that they are coming back alive? God only knows. But they had a desire that there is a country, India, where there are Gentiles. We got to go and give them Jesus. Is that right? Even today we have so many Irish institutions. And when they came, they brought the English language, the education, hospitals, medicines, so many good things. And because they brought all that and educated the people, today we are what? Blessed. Did they get a salary? I know some of the nuns who came when they were in their 20s to India, even after 80 age, they never went back home to Ireland. Which place was comfortable? Ireland or the crowded city in India? Huh? They came from here. So which one was comfortable? Ireland was comfortable. Why did they leave all their richness and came and stayed with these poor people? Because they were the church. And the church left the comfort zone and came to the most uncomfortable zone and began to give the comfort that they received from Jesus to those people. And that's how everything began to spread. So God wants us to understand that the purpose of your life is that you are the church and God builds you and us on the foundation of the word and pours into us his love so that now his church is looking for to share that love, he bring healing, bring deliverance, bring protection, bring prosperity, bring everything through the church and not the building called the church. Hallelujah. So where is healing? Found in the church. Where is restoration in relationship? Found in the church. Where is repair of marriage? Found in the church. Where is the future for the children? Found in the church. Where is the fullness of God? Found in the church. Where is the goodness of God? Found in the church. And you and I are the church. So if I am interested in becoming this, then wherever I go, the supernatural blessings of God shows up even in the hopeless environment, even in the most dangerous environment, even in the worst persecution, even in the worst war, this image brings victory. So what should be my top priority? That God, I'm willing to be conformed to the image of your son Jesus. Have you seen ever butterflies? Hello, have you seen butterflies? Yes. From how do they come from? Caterpillars. And the caterpillars are really beautiful. They are so beautiful. Oh my God. They look so beautiful. Huh? They are so ugly. But do they eat leaves? Yes. Then they go through the process? Yes. Then they become butterfly? Then they start flying? But does the caterpillar fly? No. So before I become... When I'm from the Adam and Eve, I'm in a bondage. But the day I make Jesus the Lord of my life, I've been changed from a caterpillar to a butterfly. And now are people attracted to those beautiful colors of a butterfly? Yes. Now in the same way people are attracted, attra attracted to the different colors of love. What is the fruit of the spirit? 
love, joy, peace, faith, patience, gentleness, kindness, humility, self-control, all that put together is love. So what are your colors now? All of this. Where did you get this from? By praying? No. You get this from when you renew your mind to the word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. So when God is full of love, is he saying, unless you change, I will not bless you? Does he say, first you do this and this and this, then I will bless you? Now was that, was that in the Bible before? Yes, it was there under the law of Moses. But when Jesus came, did Jesus bring the law or did he came to abolish the law? And replace with what? Love. Okay, okay, let me put it a little more detail. A little more detail. Is the God, is the God in the Old Testament and the God in the New Testament the same? Is he the God of Abraham and the God of Jesus the same? Yes. Is God of Abraham and Father of Jesus the same? I'll prove to you he is not the same. Let me give you an example. When the Israelites went to the promised land, the God of Abraham said, kill everyone. Don't spare the woman. Don't spare the children. Don't spare the cattle. Finish them all. Is that right? It says God never changes though. The word says that God never changes. So, so let me ask you, my brother. <laughs> Did he say that? Yes. yes. Did he take, command the Israelites to kill everybody? Yes. yes. Now look at the God of uh, the father of Jesus. Is he saying love one another? I don't understand. First you say, kill everybody. And he's always taking the side of the Israelites. Every time the Israelites went into war, God was on whose side? Is he the same God? No. Who said no? He's the same God. If, if, if a person who is not a Christian, a non-Christian, starts reading the Bible, by the time he starts reading, he'll say, I don't want to read the Bible anymore. It's all about killing. And God telling the people to kill. How come the same God is now saying, forgive? Hmm? Sorry? But isn't he the same God who said kill everybody? It's the same God who never changes. Then has he changed? In the Old Testament, didn't he say kill, 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 kill? And he's always on the side of the Israelites. Now let me tell you how, why. Can I share with you? Okay. Is there anybody who has been a nurse in their life? Oh, nurse? Wow. Supposing a patient comes to you and now you have got promoted to the doctor. Okay, you're a doctor. And a, and a patient comes to you and his leg is wounded and it is turned into gangrene. And you are a Christian. You are a Christian and the leg has turned into gangrene. What will you tell the patient? Huh? What did she say? That the leg has to be taken off. It has to be amputated. And you are a Christian? Yes. And you say the leg needs to be cut off? Yes. And you are a Christian? Yes. And you have got no, 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 no compassion? Well, they can choose the other alternative. <laughs> they don't amputate. They don't kill them. Sorry? If they don't amputate sometimes, it will kill them. So, so, so she will cut off the leg? 
Yes, to save the life. To save the life. Mm -hmm. Look at all Irish people are say are agreeing with you. How cruel you are. <laughs> but if she doesn't kill, uh, if she doesn't cut the leg, what will happen? Now in the same way, had God told Abraham that I make covenant with you and your descendants. And from your descendants shall come the Messiah who will bring salvation. So God has to keep every person away from the Israelites because he gets them into mixed blood then the Messiah cannot come so it would be like a gangrene so he would keep everybody aside till the lineage that the Messiah comes and finishes his job and that's why you find in the Old Testament God does not allow the Israelites to mingle with anybody or anybody to mingle with them he keeps the bloodline absolutely clean so that through the bloodline of Abraham, David, the Messiah shall come. Once he has come and done his job on the cross, now is he talking about killing? Now he is talking about saving. Did you understand now? So is God looking at the short span or is he looking at eternity? Whenever we look at anything, do we look at eternity or do we look at small, short span? Now, if Judas was your friend and he betrayed you, what would you call him? Friend or an enemy? But what did Jesus call him? And Peter who did not want Jesus to go to Jerusalem because Jesus would, would be crucified and he stops Jesus, what would you call him? What would you call Simon? A friend or get behind me Satan? Can we talk? Get behind me Satan or my friend? Because he is thinking that I should not die. Come on. But what does Jesus call him? What does Jesus call Peter? Get behind me? And what does he call Judas? Why does he do that? Because he's looking for eternity. He's looking everything based on his father's plan. And what does his father's plan say? He has to go to the cross. What is Simon doing? Hindering him from going and fulfilling his mission. What does Jesus call him? Satan. What about Judas? Has he helped him to accomplish the purpose? Yes. So what does Jesus call him? In our life, whom do we call whom? Anybody taking you to entertainment, what do you call? Friend. Anybody who is drawing, pulling you to church, what do you call? No other work? So are we looking at God's purpose or are we looking or fulfilling our purpose? Whose purpose would be stronger and better? But which, which one are we interested in? Our prayers are all about... God what can you do for me or God what can I do for you see when Paul got touched from the next moment his prayer is God Jesus tell me what do you want me to do for you and what is our prayer Jesus what can I do for you or Jesus what can you do for me Hello. Okay, in our prayers, who gives the order to whom? So who is the Lord? <coughs> Hello, when you pray to Jesus, who gives order to whom? Who makes the list? And who is giving the list to whom? And who tells who tells whom to carry it out? So who is the Lord ultimately? So do we need to change? Yes. Do we need to see that God has a plan, God has a purpose and even though there are certain things happening wrong in my life, they are meant for me 
to overcome them, win them over, and find purpose in life. There are so many mountains here. Do they have something called as mountaineering? Yes. What if that person, when he's going there and slips, some of the places they might not find his body at all? Not here? Okay, okay. But are those people still ready to take the risk to go? What do you call that? Adventure? Hello, do they call, do they call the adventure? So also in our lives, when we, are, we have trials, a champion will call it as adventure, a victim will call it as problem. Same thing. The victim will say, such a big problem, how to climb the mountain? A champion will say, wow, I'm going to conquer it. I'm going to overcome it. Christians live adventurous life every day. Because they are champions. They are conquerors. And that's why the Bible says, we are more than a conqueror. Jesus is a conqueror and we are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. So people who see their problem as a problem, they get stressed. And people who see the problem as an adventure, they become champions. Look at your neighbor and say, hi champ. Now did, you, now, did your neighbor smile at you when you said, hi, champ? Yes. Now look at your neighbor and say, hi, victim. Hi. Now is the, is the neighbor smiling at you? Because when you have a victim mindset, you don't smile. There's no joy. There's only depression. There's only sorrow. There is a person who is saying, I'm already living a defeated life. But a person who is saying, I am a conqueror, I am a champ, I am going to take this, learn through the Bible how to overcome it, is always victorious. Will we learn it in one day? No. Will there be trials? Yes. Will there be downfalls? Yes. But will the champ still get up? Yes. Every person in this world falls. But the champs and the great ones, when they fall, they get up and take the test again. Now, when you go for driving test, do they do they pass on the first attempt? Very rare. Very rare. Huh? So you give up going for the test again? How many times? Four times. She, you took four four times. Anybody took more than four times? I know one of my friend for that. Hmm. He has taken eight times. How many? Eight. <laughs> no. So, so what is he saying? My vision is that I must get that license. Has anybody been to school? Yes. Did you go through the test? Yes. Exams? Yes. Did you pass? Yes. That's why you got promoted to the next level. And then you went to the university. And then you got the degree. Now when a person gets a degree, what does that mean? It means the person never quit. He finished the course till the finishing line. As a Christian, do we have the same attitude? I am not going to quit this course because Holy Spirit has put me in his own school where there are going to be tests any time, surprise test, and all I have to do is use the word of God and pass the test. Can you tell your neighbor, pass the test? Now when you went to school, did you go and study the class, study the lessons, or you only prayed? Sure. Or you told mama you pray and I'll pass. What if a person never studied and only is praying? Don't you find a Catholic lifestyle is 
I don't study the Bible, but I'm only praying. And when the trial comes, I pass the test. Last night, it so happened, brother, we were going to a place and the road got closed. So we had to take another play, another path. And the best part was the whole path, there are no lights. At least in India, we have street lights. Here, they don't have street lights. Not interior. Interior. Yeah. Okay. And all that we could see is fence of plants. And, and it was pitch dark. And I said, do you know where you're going? He said, I know only where I'm going through the GPS. So I said, now how many, how many minutes more? He said, just two minutes more. I said, not possible. I can't see any light anywhere. And you're saying just two minutes more to the destination? He said, yes, brother, only two minutes. And I said, all you can see is darkness. Not even a single house in a vision, in sight. And all of a sudden, the moment he took a right turn, we saw lights. And when we saw lights, we said, surely in one minute we are reaching the destination. What if the GPS was not there? I asked Brother Vijay. He said, we would be driving till morning. So did he follow that lady? What if he doesn't follow that lady? Will she catch her his throat? Never. She is so Christian that she will never catch anybody's throat for disobeying. But what will she say? I'll just reroute for you. And when she reroutes, has the kilometers increased? Yes. Has the time increased? Yes. Has the fuel consumption increased? Yes. Has your irritation increased? Yes. So is it better to follow our instructions? Yes. What happened in our Christian life? Do we always have rerouting in the times of trials? Yes. Did we follow our emotions or the word of God? How does it look if I am the pilot and you are on flight and I tell you all, I will give you two world tickets if you stay on flight. Today I am not going to fly this flight based on gauge. I am going to fly this flight based on my emotions. Anybody want to fly now? No. Do we fly our life based on emotions or the gauge? Do we want to do what we desire or do we want to do what he tells us to desire? Hallelujah. So let's go to James chapter 1. Sorry. It's a question about something you said earlier about the bloodline. And King David, um, son of Solomon. But that was the true adulteress. I'm talking about the bloodline of David. The man. The man. Did David come from the bloodline of Abraham? Yeah. So he did not allow anybody to mingle in the bloodline of man. If you see the bloodline, they all came from the descendants of Abraham, right up to Jesus. And that's why God would not allow anybody to get in between the bloodline from the man. The man. man. The son, the son, the son, the son. Abraham had a son. Yeah. His son was Isaac. Isaac. So he always wanted the son to come from the bloodline of Abraham. And that's why he made a covenant. Jesus to come from the descendant of Abraham. He, sorry? 
Is there something wrong with the bloodline? They are removing the root. From the from the man's side. That's what you're saying. From the yeah. not from the female part, from the from the male part. Okay. He still is David's son. The father lineage is there. Right. The father's DNA is right from passed down from Abraham. David's son is Solomon. Solomon's son is that has been passed down until St. Joseph and eventually ended up with Jesus. There was no male coming from the Gentiles. And, 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 once, and once when Jesus comes, he dies for the whole human race and from there comes that the Gentiles are included in the promise of God. They are not included before Jesus is dead. None of the promises of God is included outside Israel. I'll show you Ephesians chapter 2. Verse number 11. Look at this. This will make you easy. So then remember that at one time, you Gentiles by birth, called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. These are Jews and those who are uncircumcised were Gentiles. the Gentiles. Okay? Remember that you were at that time without Christ being aliens from the You were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel strangers to the covenants of promise having no hope and without God in the world So the Gentiles had no covenant and therefore there was no hope for them Are you following brother and then he says but now in Christ you were once who you who once were far off have been brought near by the so what did the blood of Jesus do cleanse them and got them grafted into the commonwealth of Israel for he is a peace in his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall that is hostility between us he has abolished the law with his commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two thus making peace and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross putting death that hostility through it clear when, when you go back home yeah. you go and study it because no 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 for example did Jesus come and say, I've come to make a new covenant with you? What is the meaning of the word covenant? Promise. Huh? Promise. No. No. A covenant means where one party is saying to the other person, from now on we are not two, we are one. And in this, Whatever is mine is yours. Whatever is yours is mine. And in a covenant, one person is saying, when you are weak, I'll come and make you strong. Okay? Now, did God make a covenant with Abraham? Yes. Was Abraham weak? Yes. yes. Was God weak? No. no. But still God made a covenant? A covenant is always made for a purpose. Praise God. Praise and this covenant which he made with Abraham, now God is saying, I am making a new covenant through Jesus, where in this covenant Jesus is saying, when you are weak, I will make you strong. Now look at, Paul, look, at, look at David. Let's take for example David. When David went to fight Goliath, was he fighting Goliath on his strength or based on the covenant? He is fighting the battle not based on only the anointing of the Holy Spirit. He is fighting the battle based on covenant. Because he is saying, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? 
He's not saying who is this Philistine. He's saying who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Means a man without a covenant trying to threaten people of the covenant. Who is he? That is challenging, challenging the army of the living God. Means what? We who are covenant. And according to God's word, in a covenant, God has to show up in the battle when the other person is in covenant. So when David is saying, I'm going to fight this man, he's not fighting based on only the anointing. He's fighting on covenant. That is why he's saying to Goliath, listen, I'm going to chop off your head. A man with a covenant does not speak based on his resources. He, he speaks based on God's resources. Now can David chop off Goliath's head with stones? Hello? But is he talking the covenant language? A covenant language is where a person is all the time speaking based on what God said in his covenant. Are you following? Did David chop off his head? So, a man who understands the covenant always speaks faith. A man who does not understand covenant always speaks fear. What about Paul? Let's take Paul. Did Paul know the covenant that he had with God? Yes. And that is why Paul says, if I have to boast anything, I will always boast of my weakness. Why? Because when I'm weak, because of his covenant, I am strong. Are you following? Now let me give you a covenant language and a person not in a covenant. When a person doesn't understand the covenant, he says, the doctor said, so and so is my disease. The man who is in a covenant is saying, I thank God that by his wounds I am already healed. Are you understanding? Let's, let me give you another example. Jairus is a Jew. He is a synagogue official. But did they love Jesus? Did the Pharisees love Jesus? Oh. But when Jairus came and met Jesus, did he speak the covenant language? What did he say? That I know you can lay hands on my daughter and get my daughter well. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Now was his daughter at the point of death? Yes. Will anybody leave the daughter at that time and go to church? But did Jairus come to Jesus and when the news came that his daughter is dead was that enough for him to change his mind if the daughter is dead will that change his faith yes did Jesus open his mouth and speak to Jairus yes what if Jairus would have said it's over his daughter would have been dead and could not be raised what did Jesus say do not fear just continue believing. What's the meaning of that? Continue in your covenant language till that covenant brings forth the manifestation. Because we do not understand the covenant, we always speak in fear. But a Jewish who understands his covenant, he says, I got a partner. And he's such a strong partner that in every battle, he comes to my rescue. So will he speak based on what is partner's ability or is he going to speak on his ability? Partners. Hello. Partners. On which one do we speak? Why is Paul saying, I'm so excited that when I'm weak, his grace is sufficient for me. Why? Because I have a covenant with him. Why is the early church not having any kind of fear even when their children were killed even when their families were killed even when their properties were taken because they had a covenant with God and their covenant said even if you kill my body you cannot separate me from God because the next moment I am with my God how, do you, how are you so sure? because I have got a covenant with my God why are we not sure? because we are not sure about a covenant just put the definitions again just go behind No, 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 no. Come down, come down, come down. 
look at this remember that you are at one time without Christ so can a person be baptized in Jesus and still be without Christ for example when the problem comes is he with Christ or is he with his problem you got some bad report at that time your mind is full of Christ or your mind is full of pro your problem so are you with Christ no. so he's saying remember that you were at that time without Christ being what so there is something called as commonwealth of Israel so Israel was he were the people of Israel always having God's favor on their life so when they went into the battle were they depending on their army or God's help for the army can we talk God's help so were they all the time sure that God would surely show up because of the covenant but when they disobeyed did God show up no when they repented did God show up so in the covenant was there certain rules and regulations so did they keep the rule so in the new covenant is there a rule yes what's the rule love so when I don't operate in love when I don't operate in love what happens so that's why Jesus gave us what only one commandment what's that commandment love when you're on love are you now going to enjoy God's favor in your life see because I have a covenant with a with God and that covenant says all those who believe in me all those who did he say all those who work hard did he say all those who will fast for 40 days did he say anything no he just said all those who believe in the works that I did on the cross that's the covenant did he say you need to sweat or you need to believe which one so when you believe are you in covenant with God so can you are you now able to kill that sickness but if you don't know the covenant are you able to kill sickness no. no sickness will kill you so when I'm in a covenant am I all the time filled with joy why because I got big brother when I'm not in a covenant who is in the battle only you are you following yes. so what is the devil's job his job his job is to get me away from Christ so when I'm away from Christ have I got unbelief yes. now can Christ work in me no. because I'm already disconnected so what's my battle to get healing so is my battle to get healing or is my battle to be in Christ let me show you how this works can we study still deeper on the covenant okay just put that mark chapter 5 and we'll come to this. Hey, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Read that, read that, strangers. To the covenant of promise. Read that again. To the covenant of promise. Have you ever heard the word? Have you ever heard the word called hopeless? Yes. Okay. Now let let me show you how does this work in my life, and then you can come here and check with your own life how it will work for you instantly because you understand the covenant when you are in covenant you don't beg when you are in covenant you believe when you're not in a covenant you're begging but it won't work okay just put that mark 5 25 Let's read it, please. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had. She was not bet no better, but rather grew worse. Now with the bleeding problem, according to the law, 
what did it say if a woman has got a bleeding problem the the law said she is under god's curse she is in isolation she is unclean and if she comes out in the open she is supposed to be stoned to death so what is she thinking the whole day hey what is she thinking the whole day she is under curse has 12 years gone by what if a person is facing the same situation for 12 12 years is that person's heart hardened into hopelessness yes. now look at your look over here she had endured many physicians spent all that she had and was no better but rather grew worse so what was a mind full of god god or sickness <coughs> what the doctor said come on she had endured much from many so many doctors gave her different reasons why she's sick had she spent all the money yes so she was broke in her finances she was broke in her relationship she was broke in her health she was broke in everything so the whole day what is she thinking about god or is she thinking about everything else was she growing worse now watch what happens she heard about jesus jesus and came up behind the crowd and touched his cloak for she said if i but touch his clothes i shall be healed now when she came behind the crowd did she open her mouth and say how will i pass through the crowd so did the crowd stop her from looking to jesus how does that happen Have you ever seen your husband watch football match on TV? How does he watch? At that time, when you call out his name, does he turn back and say, "Yes, darling, what do you want me to do for you?" Full concentration. Huh? Full concentration. Full concentration. And if the ball is on the opposite team, close to the goal post, now is he sitting on that stool chair or is he already standing? Is he screaming? is his whole body going this side that side and now you are standing in front of him is he looking at you how beautiful you are or is he looking at the football now at that time even if you are in in the middle will he sit there or will he do this way and still watch so he is full of the game in the same way just in the same way she is full of What has she heard about Jesus? Hello, what is he? What What do you think she has heard about Jesus? When Jesus laid hands on the people, they all died, and there was a massive funeral. Every person he touched, they died. Ah. Uh, so if she heard about healing, now is she full of Jesus? when she is full of jesus is she saying how am i going to go no is she saying who is going to take me no is she saying how weak i am no is she saying anything it is just like a person watching football is full of is full of the match in the same way she is full of jesus my question to you is in a covenant am i full of god i have got a covenant with with my partner god but am i full of god or am i full of my problem when a person becomes full of god the bible says watch this if i touch you i will be immediately i am rich stop and she felt in her body that she was healed of a disease immediately aware of that power that had gone forth from him Jesus turned around and said who touched my clothes and the disciple said to him you see the crowd is pressing in on you and you say who touched me Jesus looked around who had done this and the woman knowing what had happened to her came in fear and trembling fell before him and he told him the whole truth and Jesus said to her daughter your faith no 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 did Jesus see her faith and what did she see 
she see, she saw the character of jesus so she was full of character of jesus and jesus saw her faith in our life which one do we see when will i get healed did i get healed will i get healed now will i get healed later on lord how will you heal me it's all about healing all about jesus hey can you talk talk yes, can you talk no. now in that episode do you find her even one moment how will i get faith now how will i do this now how will i do that no she is only thinking of only one thing jesus you are such a wonderful man full of love wow all those who came to you are full of compassion wow you 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 only uh, you did not even ask them from where you came who are you nothing you just is full of mercy you are full of grace you are full of love you are full of kindness you are full of patience full 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 oh oh jesus 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 now when when she saw the crowd did that change her no is she still full of jesus yes. what did jesus see in her he saw in her full of his promises full of his character full of his his nature hello was she asking jesus please heal me no was she full of jesus yes so what did jesus see in her full of him so when when jesus sees in us full of him he calls it faith and if my desire is full of my healing then does jesus see him or he sees your healing is there a difference between the two i i i am not even i am not even looking at my wife but i am looking at the football match but do i love my wife yes do i want her by my side yes but i am so much engrossed in the match in the same way do i need my healing yes do i want all those things yes but i'm so much engrossed with jesus is there a difference yes. so what is jesus seeing that i'm looking at my wife or is he seeing i'm looking at the football match in the same way what is he looking at i'm looking at what can i get from him or i'm looking at how wonderful he is and how much full of love he is is there a difference and a person who fills his mind and heart with how beautiful he is and what he has done for me on the cross is the one who is now full of grace okay let me give you another example if a irish person goes to india in goa when it is when when the when when the uh, during the day time and lies down on the beach with the hands legs exposed will that sun have an effect on the skin yes and if that person is there for 15 days doing the same will the skin get more and more tanned yes now do you understand why our skin is so tanned <laughs> okay now that person who got tanned is so happy but then the person comes to ireland does that color remain no is it gone yes. in the same way when a person hears what the word says and is only thinking about the word nothing other than that word what jesus did what oh he opened blind eyes oh he is so powerful oh jesus did this oh jesus did that he is full of jesus 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 now will that presence tan his body Yes. yes so when i'm looking to him is called me tapping into grace but when god looks at me full of grace he calls it my faith did you follow you you are you are rebuking that thing because you don't want it to obstruct your 
connection. No, 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 you don't meditate, Jesus, your eyes are blue, you will not get anything. What you are meditating on what he did for okay okay you are meditating on what he did for you on the cross surely you will bring bring amazing healings and miracles that's what it says I'll give you a, I'll give you a scripture to prove that give me Psalms 1 verse 2 and 3 and let's see that Mark 11 23 is to get those spiritual things that you can't see who is blocking for example Daniel was praying to God the angel Gabriel came as soon as he finished his prayer and said God has answered your prayer Daniel okay 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 oh okay 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 I'll, I'll, I'll explain to you okay and he said God answered your prayer when you began to pray the next time Daniel is praying but this time with fasting 21 days have gone by and the prayers are not answered. After 21 days, Angel Gabriel comes. Okay? And says, Daniel, your prayer was answered the day you started your prayer. So, Daniel is saying, if my prayer was answered, why did it take 21 days? He said, there was a war in the spiritual and I was not allowed to come to you till I had to call Archangel Michael who took over the battle and I came to now talk to you so in the spiritual realm there are barriers okay and what did Jesus say if you have faith then you can speak to the mountain so now you are looking at Jesus with what he did on the cross but at the same time what he did on the cross will not come to me directly because there is a devil who is going to cause destruction or, or, or call hindrance so now he's saying you speak to the mountain even though you can't see that spirit so when I'm full of Jesus I'm not scared of the mountain if I'm not having full of Jesus or what he did for me then the mountain is threatening me now in this woman in this woman what did you come why did you come here Psalms 1 was, was 2 and 3 because, I, I, because she spoke about meditation. They are delight? Okay, put one brother. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked. So when a person is following the advice of the wicked, what is his mind full of? God's word? Or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of the scoffers. But they delight in the and on his laws they. So what do they become? So what was that woman doing for twelve years? What she, was she doing? Verse number two. For twelve years. No, when she heard about Jesus, was she doing verse number two? Even when she saw the crowd, was she continuing with do verse number two? So three came as a result. See, see, that's why the spiritual world we cannot sense with our senses, but God has given us strategies. He says, if you meditate. On my covenant if you meditate on my promises before that promise can come to manifestation Satan will try his best to distract you he is going to cause a lot of issues using your senses to tell you those promise will not come to pass so what's your battle your battle is to fight against those thoughts that come to you and continue to meditate on his word day and night. So, 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 let's say, are thoughts spiritual? Do I get godly thoughts? Do I get ungodly thoughts? Do they both come from the same kingdom? So one comes from the kingdom of darkness to stop me. 
okay now if i don't take authority and rebuke them they will come and give me more negative thoughts so jesus is saying on one side you meditate on my promise and on the other side you also attack those negative thoughts that are coming to you when these two work together the result is there give me mark chapter give me hebrews chapter 6 Six eleven, six eleven or five eleven. How many promises have you got? Hmm. How many promises have you got? I don't know, brother. But there are plenty. Because I have never counted them, so how can I tell you? Many promises over thousands. Because there are people who said so many are there, but unless I am not sure, I won't give the figure. Okay. But I can say. promises are there for everything look at verse number 11 and we want each of you to show the same diligence as to realize the assurance of the hope to the very end now did she from hopeless became at became got new hope when she heard about jesus yes. did she keep that hope right before her eyes yes now what is he saying so that you may not become or is sluggish spiritually lazy but become what imitators of those who through faith, faith what so can anybody inherit the promises without patience and what is patience there is a battle and in that battle the devil wants to give you fear so that you become impatient have you ever got impatient when are you impatient when everything is going fine or when everything is going crazy and that's the time you get into fear your attitude becomes negative and now out of anger comes impatience but if the person is still in faith can he have impatience so can promises of god be inherited without patience do you know who is a mature christian not the one who preaches the word of god not the one who does mighty miracles a mature christian is the one who has patience in the midst of his battle Yes, yes, that's that's called meditation. Oh, wait, wait. Yeah. So I wasn't vis- I wasn't visualizing. I was, you know, reading the book of the Bible in the white book and speaking the promises of the Lord. And nothing was happening. But I wasn't visualizing. I wasn't, you know, maybe doing it properly. So 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 what was this woman doing? She was visualizing, visualizing and she visualized so much that it did not she's like watching a football match. her concentration was so much that she had that urge to get out of her house in spite of death in spite of the crowd now now for example let me give you an example when do you call there is a flood in ireland when the water reaches your knees right when the water reaches your knees you will say there is flood in ireland in my country when the water reaches the roof we say it's going to be flood now because our capacity of taking that is very high are you are you following and, and now now when you go to africa their capacity is still higher because of the hardships are you following yes. so the thinking is going to be based on now was she operating in both of this yes and that's why jesus saw her faith so are we supposed to look at our faith or are we supposed to look at jesus and his promises jesus so what is jesus going to see in us now when there was a storm the the disciples tried their best to get the ship on the other side what was jesus doing sleeping. sleeping why was he sleeping because he knew one thing that his father is taking care of him but when the disciples woke him up what did they say they were so much filled with fear that they accused him by saying you don't even care for us we are all going to die 
did jesus argue with them no he just spoke to the storm what happened to them they were amazed with what he did and what did he say to them where's your faith hadn't i taught you the whole day about the sower and the seed hadn't i told you this is how it works did you what did you not have to say to the storm be still because this power is given to every one of us are you following yes. so am i full of jesus so to become full of jesus am i using emotions or am i using this gps the word of god so now can i face battles in life yes now have i got somebody stronger than the battles coming against me will i get the victory are the promises to be earned or inherited what are we trying to do because we are saying i must say the scriptures a thousand times you are trying to earn it i am not saying the scripture 10000 times i am saying the scripture 1000 times because i love him and i say thank you lord but i am not saying 1000 times thank you so that i can get the promise done you are wrong i i are you are you understanding i am saying that because i am in love with him and i'm saying lord i love you so much and i thank you i thank you i thank you lord for your by your wounds i am healed i thank you lord i thank you but now i am saying i have to do a thousand times because oh, if i don't do i will not get my healing that's not faith that's not called grace that's not uh, full of jesus that's full of your works see it's a thin line and when you understand that at once the person gets healed okay is there anybody who has got a problem in the hip you come come you are in front of the camera are you okay with that yeah okay. yeah because through her testimony so many will be blessed come what's happened to your hip it is only a so yeah not damage no just a small one yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. okay stand here close your eyes and look at jesus like the woman with the issue of blood she heard about jesus and she kept saying to herself if i touch his cloak i shall be healed in the same way you say open your mouth and say jesus jesus i love you for taking my place for taking my place on the cross on the cross lord jesus lord jesus your body was wounded your body was wounded for my sake for my sake you took every punishment you took every punishment that i deserved that i deserved in your body in your body i love you jesus i love you jesus you did all that you did all that because of love because of love so that so that becoming a substitute becoming a substitute you can set me free you can set me free from all punishment from all punishment lord jesus lord jesus i love you i love you i love you jesus i love you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus for taking my place for taking my place i can see your body i can see your body totally wounded totally wounded especially especially all your bones all your bones they are all out of joint they are all out of joint i can imagine i can imagine but cannot comprehend but can i comprehend the intensity of pain the intensity of pain that you went through that you went through because of love because of love oh lord jesus oh lord jesus i love you i love you i thank 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 you i praise you i praise you amen amen is the pain now <laughs> check move <laughs> did we ask for healing yeah we asked for healing or we just said how painful it was for him yeah yeah you never asked jesus heal me no did you say jesus heal me no you only said jesus i cannot comprehend the pain you went through now for that moment of 3 min 2 minutes 
Were you full of Jesus? Yeah. Or you were full of your healing? Full of Jesus. It went. Next. Who wants next? Come quickly. We have to go to the next place. Oh, it's a break or it's a timeout? Oh, uh, just just one more person. Come on, one person, please. Somebody, one person. Come, 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 come. The same formula. No asking for healing, okay? Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Close your eyes again. And say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I love you. I love you. The Bible says. Sorry? The, the Bible says. The Bible says. As you carried the cross. As you carried the cross. You fell on your knee. You fell on your knee. And your knees were bleeding. And your knees were bleeding. With my eyes of faith. My eyes of faith. I see your whole body. I see your whole body. Wounded. Wounded. Your knees. Your knees. Wounded. Wounded. As it hit the ground. As it hit the ground. With stones. With stones. O oh Lord Jesus. O oh Lord Jesus. All your bones. All your bones. Were out of joint. Were out of joint. There is so much of pain. There is so much of pain. You went through. You went through. Because of my sins. Because of my sins. To heal me. To heal me. To save me. To save me. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I love you. I love you. I thank you. I thank you. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. For taking my place. For taking my place. On the cross. On the cross. You have set me free. You have set me free. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. As I keep looking. As I keep looking. At your body. At your body. There's not one cell. There's not one cell. One tissue. One tissue. In your body. In your body. That is healthy. That is healthy. It's all wounded. It's all wounded. And all this. And all this. Because of our sins. Because of our sins. And in spite of all this. And in spite of all this. You still continue to say. You still continue to say. That you love me. That you love me. I love you Jesus. I love you Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now move your knees up and down. Move it. Is, it, is the pain there now? Thank you. Is the pain there? Little bit. Little bit. Okay. Close your eyes. And, and don't say for the healing. Say, keep saying, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Thank you for becoming Thank a substitute for me. Thank you for becoming a substitute for me. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Your body was wounded. Your body was wounded. Only because of love. Only because of love. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. You love me, Jesus. You love me, Jesus. And I love you, Jesus. And I love you, Jesus. You love me, Jesus. You love me, Jesus. And I love you, Jesus. And I love you, Jesus. You love me, Jesus. You love me, Jesus. And I love you, Jesus. And I love you, Jesus. That pain that you went through. That pain that you went through. When you fell on your knees. When you fell on your knees. I can see you with my eyes of faith. I can see with my eyes of faith. The impact. The impact. When you fell on your knees. When you fell on your knees. On that dusty stony on road. That, on that dusty stony road. I cannot comprehend. I cannot comprehend. The love that you have for me. The love that you have for me. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now check. Yeah. 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 Did you ask for healing? I didn't. Sir. How many years? Sorry. Oh, just only a few weeks. I hope. Few weeks. Yeah, few weeks. But did it go? Yeah. Yeah. It's better. Yeah. yeah. So did we ask for healing? Oh, yeah. we did. No, we, we only we, spoke we about, his, about his about his, his pain and sacrifice. His pain and sacrifice. So were you full of Jesus now? Yes. 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 So when you're full of Jesus, did Jesus see the full of him in you? Yes. So did he see your faith? Yes. So what are you full of? Jesus. Jesus. So when he sees you full of Jesus, your body gets healed. Thank you very much. Is that okay? Yes. The cap? Come, come. That's what I'm calling people for. Come. 
Yeah, tell me. Can you come this side? Yeah. yeah. Um, where do I start? Um, do I healing from? Um, he, healing from uh, asthma. Okay. Hay fever. Okay. Um, psoriasis, pains, aches, um, sinfulness, my, caught up in all my sins. Um, negativity. Like, so so um, so can we can we first kill kill yeah. that asthma? Yeah, yeah. Because asthma to be killed in three minutes is not easy, right? Um, nothing's impossible for God. No, 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 no. That's yeah. why I'm saying asthma to be killed in three minutes is not easy. Not easy, no. Okay. No. And a person with asthma cannot run long distance. <laughs> he, he will collapse. Yeah. Yeah, and and we will do that now. Yeah. Okay, we'll see right before eyes. Yeah. And in this time, we will not ask for healing. We'll be only full of Jesus. Jesus. Full of Jesus. That's all. Yes. Okay. We'll take what the promise says, and you'll be only full of Jesus. Yes. The next moment, asthma is killed. Is that a good? <coughs> Hello. That's all good. Okay. Close your eyes. Say this, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, Jesus. The Bible says. The Bible says. That you took our sins in your body. That you took our sins in our body. In your body. In your body. So that we would not live for sin. So that we would not live for sin. But shall live unto righteousness. But shall live unto righteousness. And by your wounds. And by your wounds. We have been healed. We have been healed. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. As I look at you. As I look at you. My substitute. My substitute. On that cross. On that cross. I can see your suffering. I can see your suffering. When the soldiers. When the soldiers. When the soldiers. Kicked you, kicked you into your chest, into your chest. The Bible says, the Bible says, they hit you with blows, they hit you with blows, stronger than the bulls of Bashan, stronger than the bulls of Bashan. Bashan. And yet, and yet, you took all those blows. You took all those blows. Only for me. Only for me. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Your lungs. Your lungs. Were totally damaged. Were totally damaged. And on the cross. And on the cross. When you were hanging. When you were hanging. Crucified. Crucified. You were finding it. You were finding it. So difficult. So difficult. To breathe. To breathe. Every breath. Every breath. That you breathed. That you breathed. Was full of pain. Was full of pain. And all this you did. And all this you did. Only for my sake. Only for my sake. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Your whole breathing track. Your whole breathing track. Was totally damaged. Was totally damaged. And you went through breathlessness. And you went through breathlessness. For my sake. For my sake. I thank you. I thank you. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Through that damage, through that damage, lungs, lungs, my lungs are completely healed. My lungs are completely healed. Amen. Amen. Now, can you run three rounds over here? Run. Okay. And keep Ready? saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Keep running.
You got a pain in your legs? Yeah. Yeah, we'll fix up the leg and then you can run. Because I saw you limping. Yeah. Okay, close your eyes. That, that, that's a good evidence that you can't even run because your legs have got problem. What, what's, what's your leg got problem? It's like a sprain there when I started running. Right now? Um, or was it already there? Um, just right now. Okay. I started running. Okay. Look at Jesus' legs. Okay. And say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Every part of your body. Every part of your body. Went through. Went through. Unbearable pain. <coughs> unbearable, unbearable pain. All that for my sake. All that for my sake. I love you. I love you. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. As I'm watching you. As I'm watching you. According to the promises. According to the promises. I see with my eyes of faith. I see with my eyes of faith. There's an exchange that has taken place. There is an exchange that has, that has taken place. Every sickness. Every sickness. Sin. Sin. Bad habits. Bad habits. Addictions. Addictions. Have left my body. Have left my, bo my body. Into your mystical body. Into your mystical body. And you did all this. And you did all this. Because you love me. Because you love me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It is finished. It is finished. Every sickness in my body. Every, every sickness in my body. Is nailed on the cross. Is nailed on the cross. And I am completely set free. And I am completely set free. Amen. Amen. Now go ahead. Okay. Now your legs are stronger. Yeah. yeah. Good. Any breathlessness? No, nothing. You'll never suffer from asthma. Because I score 99% when it comes to asthma. Yeah. There are certain scoring yeah. in my life. So when you said asthma, I said I can kill it all the time. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I feel better. I will get breathlessness, you know, a lot, a lot. Hmm? Like I, would get, I used to get breathlessness a lot. Yeah, but now you wouldn't no. get breathlessness. No. And what did you say? Hay? <coughs> what is that? Hay? Hay for you. What, what, what is that? Dust allergy. Follow okay, me. after the break, we'll go into the grass. Take some grass, apply it in your nose. Okay. That grass also can give you allergy? In the summertime. The summertime, summertime yeah. Only summertime? Many nose, uh, wheezy, uh, chesty. All yeah. that is gone, brother. Yeah. Yeah. Father, we thank you, we praise you. For teaching us, O oh Lord, that there is hope in Jesus. There is a future in Jesus. You got plans and purposes in our life. Even this brother who had so much of sicknesses in his body, as they are killed and healed, and he's healed from all those sicknesses, he has found a new purpose, O oh Lord, that he can do the same by sharing his testimony to others and bringing them into faith. Lord, Every negative work of the devil, we can turn it around for glory and use that same negative thing to destroy the kingdom of darkness. When we look to you, the pioneer and the finisher of our faith. Thank you, Lord, for all these wonderful things that you did and you continue to do and you continue to teach us. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. So when we come back, we'll continue. Praise God. Are we coming back? Yeah, small session. Small session. So, yeah. Just listen. Just, 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 just. Yeah. Every Saturday.